Holly. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Short devotion this morning. I just want to focus on a couple of points from the Gospel reading. That wonderful account how Jesus felt most at home in the temple with his Father. Why don't we pray? Lord, as we meditate on your word, may your Holy Spirit enliven us. May you challenge us and excite us. May you soothe us. May you forgive us and renew us. In your name we pray. Amen. Two things I want to focus on. One was that Jesus, he was God. We confess that. In fact, we sang about it in Hark the Herald Angels Sing. You know, as the incarnate deity comes to earth, we declare that Jesus was indeed God, and yet we hear that Jesus continued to grow in maturity, grow in understanding. In other words, all of us, as the people of God, are called to continue to grow. Being a Christian, being a person of faith, means that God wants us to continue to move in a direction that is closer to him. When I read this and I think, surely Jesus knew everything. But that wasn't true. Jesus was just a human being. Of course, he was God, but he left so much of the things that we would normally associate with God, his attributes of knowing all things. Those things he left behind when he humbled himself to become a human being. And so he grew and he learned. I wonder about us how much time we devote to our spiritual growth. I contrast what everybody did when they come to the Passover festival. They all traipsed in, had their festival, did what they had to do, and they traipsed out. And I'm not making any judgment about that, but contrast that to what Jesus did. As they all piled into Jerusalem and they left, he wanted to continue to grow. Yep, he certainly had teaching at the temple. He would have been completely immersed in the rituals, but he wanted more. And so he engaged in the teachers of the law. And when I see, I think about growth, things I think about with growth are stretching, measuring you know i watch teddy i see him every day and i see him grow and he gets stronger and bigger and you know how he does that he looks for things to challenge him he's always reaching for something bigger reaching for something higher he's always trying to go on a, a, a climbing frame that's too big for him that's how he grows and the same thing with us when it comes to our spiritual life are we stretching ourselves? Are we reaching? Are we trying to climb a little bit? Or are we quite happy sitting where we are? If we're happy sitting where we are, we're not going to grow. And for us to get the most out of our relationship with God, he calls us to continue to grow, to exercise our spiritual muscles. Just like a child becomes more proficient I really love watching children and you can see them here at the school and you see them at the beginning of the year and they struggle on the balance beam and they struggle with their, um, their, their, their physical capacity and at the end of the year they're skipping along the balance beam and they're confident in their balance, they're confident in their muscles, they're confident in their ability to achieve things. And you see this with children, they're happy to take the risk, they're happy to explore, they're happy to reach out. And yet I feel that many of us are reluctant to do that in our spiritual life. We're reluctant to try new things. We're reluctant to go on the balance beam for fear that we might fall over. Oh, imagine that if we made a mistake. 
But God doesn't care about our mistakes. He's much more interested in encouraging us to grow. I also think about when our children were small. They always wanted to know how tall they were. They always, did I grow? How much did I grow this term? And of course, we didn't like marking the walls, so we had a, uh, a big poster thing that we put on the, the, the side of the door. I'm sure you had something similar. And the children had different colours. This is what we had, and we saw how they grew. And they had such pride in pointing when somebody came over, look how much I've grown. They had a pride in the fact that they are growing. They didn't mind being measured. They quickly whacked themselves up against the thing and put, stood up nice and straight to make sure that they were, we got every last millimetre. But what about if God challenges us and says, I'd like to measure, just like to measure where you are in your spiritual life. Would we feel comfortable with that or would we shy away? Would we feel like we're judged or would we feel like God is encouraging us to take the next run? And that's, a, that's an attitude thing. God's not here to judge us. We know from the gospel, it says, those of us who are baptised and believe are saved. We have passed from death to life. So when God challenges us and says, let's have a bit of a review. Where are you in your spiritual life? It's not God judging us, it's him encouraging us. It's like putting a mark on the wall and saying, how do you feel about growing a bit more? And there's many ways we can do that. Is there a ministry that God is calling us to? Now's a good time. Most of us have got a little bit of time to sit back over the next week or two. What's God calling us to do to stretch our muscles, to try something? Maybe he's calling us to try uh, one of the ministries we have here in the church. Perhaps he's, he's calling us to uh, a different devotional life. Perhaps he's encouraging us to look at how we can use our gifts to care for others. Maybe he's looking for us to take a wider role in worship. There are many, 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 many ways in which we can explore our growth, our spiritual growth. And almost always it has something to do with us doing something brand new, something we hadn't otherwise thought of. And the blessings are incredible. You know what it's like when you try something new and you're a bit reluctant at the start, but once you get into it, you feel a sense of accomplishment. A sense of well-being that, hey, look, here's a skill, here's an ability, here's a capacity that God has given me that I'm nurturing and I'm growing. And when I think about this reading, I can't help but think that God is calling every single one of us to grow this year. The boy Jesus grew. The boy Jesus did things that were different did things that were unexpected, stepped out in faith. Now, I'm not saying we're Jesus, but certainly we too can take up that challenge. What's God challenging us this year to do, to take up, to, to, to exercise those spiritual muscles? I guess the second thing that I meditate on this particular scripture is how Jesus, even though he wanted to be in the temple, he obeyed his parents. There must have been a conflict for him, right? In his heart, he is fully God. He wanted to be where God resides. Where does God live? God lives in the temple. It's where God lives. This is his natural place. That's where he wanted to be. And yet he was given parents and he was given temporal authority in his life. And there's no doubt that that caused him Stress. This is one example where we see it, probably the only example uh, we see it. Maybe at the wedding of Cana as well, where his mother said, come and fix this. And he says, woman, it's not my time, and what's it got to do with you? But 
there would have been plenty of times where Jesus, who understood that his mission in line with the will of God is to do this, and yet there are authorities that are in his life to guide, protect him, have been set up to care for him, and there would have been times when he came into conflict with those authorities. And what did Jesus do? He said, okay, I get the fact that you do not understand my calling, yet the authority that is over me has been given by God, and he obeyed his parents. And as Christians, we have that too. The Apostle Paul says that, right? That authorities have been set up for good order, and he asks us to follow the law, and he asks us to pray for our leaders, except there's only one exception when what they ask us to do is against the will of God, against what God says in the Bible. The Lord Jesus gives us this cracking example where here he is in the temple, he thinks this is where I need to be, this is the most important thing in the world and his parents say, right now you need us, you need us to help you in your journey, in your growth and he obeys his parents. And I'm not saying that it's easy for us, just like it wasn't easy for Jesus. There's going to be many times in our life where we come across those situations. And I pray that we too would have the wisdom, the wisdom of Jesus, to be able to know when to say, I obey, and when to say, no, this is against the will of God. This is something that we grow into. And we can only do it as we grow in faith, as we test our faith, as we test our spiritual growth. Just a few things to think about from this scripture, just a few things to ponder on over the next week as Mary pondered these things in her heart. Why don't we pray? Lord, may you enlighten us, may you sharpen our consciences, may you give us your Holy Spirit, may you guide us always. May you challenge us and stretch us in our spiritual growth. May you give us wisdom to know your will. In your name we pray today. Amen. All right, we'll have the prayers for today.